for the past two years I have been growing my hair as long as I possibly could and today I wanted to share all the things I did to make that possible. Some of these things are a little bit obvious and some things are just really not talked about enough. I wanted to share a small little disclaimer because I'm not a hair professional, I'm just me. I just want to share what has worked for me. Obviously this is very dependent on our genetics but we're allowed to try. I think that would be my whole mission with this video. You're allowed to try even though we all have our certain limitations. My hair is very typical Scandinavian, fine, straight with not really any volume whatsoever. I'm gonna stand up so you can see. This is the length it is now and if it's looking a little bit uneven it's because it probably is because I've just been trimming it myself. Essentially after a shower here and there I just take the ends and trim a little bit to get the sort of the worst of the split ends off. So especially at this length it is practically impossible to make it do anything other than what it wants to which is just hang here. So I've just kind of given up trying to make any sort of volume or curl or anything like that happen and just work with what I have instead. This is also my natural hair color. I actually had to look this up uh, according to the trichological, trichological, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but their society, hair grows between 0 0.5 and 1.7 centimeters every month. I will put the inches conversion somewhere on the screen because I definitely do not have that in my head, but I did take out the tape measure and my hair now me measures like 86 centimeters. The last time I had it cut at the hairdressers it was 44 centimeters so that is a growth of 42 centimeters. This hair growth also includes the trimmings. It still puts the hair growth at the upper end of that sort of range. Obviously two things affect your hair length. It's how fast and for how long it grows out of your head and for how long it can sort of withstand the damage you cause it so it doesn't break off before it's even sort of stopped growing. Part of this is genetics obviously like the growth cycle but obviously the more damage you cause to your hair the more it's going to break off and it's going to feel like it's either not growing or growing very slowly. I don't personally do a lot to try to affect the speed with which hair grows out of my scalp. I've not tried any of like the hair growth pills or collagens or any of the products that you either apply to the hair or the scalp or ingest in some way or form so I can't really speak to the validity of those. If you've tried them let me know how they worked for you but I do get blood work done to make sure that my vitamin levels are good. After I started to get my vitamin levels sort of in order I noticed how much faster my nails grew. Noticing hair growth is much more long term but I feel like it makes sense that having good nutrition and making sure that your body is healthy on the inside would only have a positive effect. This should be needless to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, so do not start stuffing yourself with all kinds of vitamins. All I can recommend is that you make sure that you are healthy and that you get blood work done to check that your levels are good. If you start taking anything, do it with a doctor, which I'm not. Moving on to the part where I put most of my effort in hair care, you might need to sacrifice a few of the things that you are currently doing in your routine if you want to prioritize hair growth. If that's not worth it to you, then I mean, that's something you can consider. Maybe it's not worth it to have longer hair if you have to give all of these things up. And the first one, you know it's coming, it's bleach. It's a lot less damaging to color your hair, obviously, but if you can embrace your natural hair, I find that that causes a lot less damage to it, which we all know, but sometimes it's hard to do. When I decided to sort of make this a little bit of a project to see how long I could actually get my hair, I decided to put away the curling irons and just accept that my hair does not want to do that. Drying my hair in the right way means I don't have to use straighteners as much. And obviously when you do use them, use heat protection. The third one, and I feel like most people are better than me at this, but reduce the amount that you wash your hair. I think this is pretty common knowledge at this point. And the excessive sort of cleaning of both your hair and your scalp only work to dry it out further. I sometimes get my scalp, my eczema acting up, and when it does, I have to wash my hair every single day and it gets so horribly hay-like. I don't personally try to 
push it any longer than I have to because that only causes more issues but definitely try to avoid overwashing as much as you can and the fourth thing is very much in line with the last and that is to be very strategic with your hairstyling and also sort of the products hairstyling products you use because I'm not demanding my hair to do a lot of different things contrasting with the texture that it already has. I don't feel like I need a lot of very strong hold foams or anything like that and I definitely don't flush my scalp in a lot of product avoiding things like strong hold hairsprays or texture pomades that can cause a lot of tangling especially if you're not washing your hair every day. If I know that I have something special I want to do where I want to do more with my hair I line that up so I'm washing my hair in the evening that day or the next day. There's a lot of focus on some of these other things here, but I feel like treating your hair gently is just very underrated. Having my hair like this, it gets caught in everything. When I put on jackets, it gets stuck between my clothing and the jacket sleeve. There's friction there. Trying to pull it out if it's stuck under a coat can like cause damage to it. I mean, this is not as damaging as bleach, but when you're thinking over several years, the amount of damage you can cause to your hair just by sort of pulling it and doing unnecessary things. Be mindful of your hair not getting it tangled or stuck in things, clothing or whatever it is and using protective hairstyles also when you're sleeping so you're not damaging it. This also goes for brushing your hair. Use brushes with very flexible bristles and always you know, start at the bottom and sort of go up very gently so you're not causing unnecessary damage when you're brushing your hair. Obviously, do not put in extensions as a quick fix. It will only take you longer to get to the end goal. Overall, just be more mindful with how we treat our hair even when we're doing things that are not necessarily like the most obviously damaging things that we do to it. So the final sort of do slash don't. Uh, I know this is going to be a little bit controversial. I know the general tip is to always get regular trims and I do trim my hair fairly regularly. I don't know how to say this without pissing everybody off but I... Oh I know, okay, find a hairdresser that gets on board with your goals. At one point in my life uh, I had a horrible haircut. Uh, there's a whole story behind it. It's not great. One side of my hair was really really short. The urge for most hairdressers I would imagine is to just even everything out so everything is at the same length. Yes it's short uh, but it looks I mean it looks like it was intentional and I did not want that. I did not want to go that short so I walked around to a few different hairdressers and I just had to explain, can you please not? I don't want to go that short. Can we do it over a longer time? So we slowly even things out and I don't lose all of the length. And he was on board and he was amazing. I'm sure he died a little bit inside when I walked out because it was definitely not even, but I was so happy over like several sessions, it evened out and I didn't have to go very short and I felt better. So find someone that is kind of on board and once you get past a stage where you don't cause so much damage to your hair anymore and you stop doing all of those stupid things which I have done it's not going to be that constant struggle where somebody wants to cut off like half your hair because it's so damaged there is a difference between getting regular trims and cutting off way too much every single time you go to a hairdresser for me it really helps to remember that I might not need to give up all of the things that I want to do to my hair but I, I will start with a few until your hair gets a little bit of length just kind of doing a bit of a lazy approach to your hair be very careful in the way you're sort of styling your hair and brushing it and be too lazy to sort of curl it and keeping up with bleaching roots Moving on to my actual routine, it's just based on keeping my hair healthy and sort of keeping frizz to a minimum, caring for my scalp and if I can add a little bit of shine. Now before I shower I always sort of brush through my hair, I find that that makes it 
a lot less tangled when I wash my hair and for after so I avoid having to sort of really struggle to detangle or brush my hair when it's wet and much more fragile and if I use a hair mask I obviously do it right before the shower stage it's the Philip Kingsley elasticizer I've used so many tabs of this it's great because it doesn't make my hair really heavy it feels really light but still really moisturized I also do a scalp treatment once a week sometimes twice a week i use the Inkalist salicylic acid exfoliating scalp treatment and this is definitely one of the best scalp products i've ever used i will say the packaging is quite awful i think they've updated it but i buy this in bulk when i do so i have not tried the updated packaging yet but i put it over in this little spray bottle and then i just spray directly onto my scalp in like sections and i find that that works a lot better i leave this on for at least an hour i think the packaging says a lot less for like 10 minutes but over time i've definitely experimented with letting this sit on my scalp for longer for me this has been such a good product if you struggle with an oily or flaky scalp definitely give this one a try it's been a lifesaver i've been using this for well over a year now i'm um, i can't imagine ever stopping using it i can really recommend it and whether you think your scalp is dry or oily i mean just try it i tend to wash my hair twice a week i would try to leave it for a bit longer if i could but i tend to get scalp issues if i do and i also use lukewarm water i've tried the whole cold water thing i definitely don't think I have not seen a difference and it's very unpleasant so I'm not doing any of that. Let's talk about shampoos. I mean I like my hair masks but I definitely don't feel like any of those can save hair that is not treated well otherwise. I've been using sulfate free shampoos for well over 10 years. I have been really loving the Raba Classic shampoo. I also have the conditioner and this is fantastic if you've been using sulfate free shampoos they can be much more difficult to lather up and sometimes the hair can feel like a little bit heavy or sticky after this one doesn't do any of that i think it is fantastic i do like switching out my hair care every few months on like a rotating basis and i have other shampoos that i really like this is definitely the most expensive and i don't think that healthy hair has to come with this kind of a price tag that is just ridiculous but i have to mention this if you don't mind spending the money this is a really, really enjoyable shampoo. I love this. I will link some of the other shampoos that I've been using as well. I quite like the John Masters Organics. I think they've changed formulas a couple of times now. So I'm kind of not really keeping track anymore of what is what. So I'm a little bit careful to recommend them. But overall, I've had really good success with their shampoos as well. It might sound a little bit excessive, but when I wash my hair, I am, again, very, very careful. And I tend to wash my hair twice. I use a scalp brush on the first wash, put the shampoo into my hands and just disperse it. And then I go into my hair and sort of, I only do it on the scalp. I don't tend to wash any other part of my hair. It rinses off and then washes on its way down. If I've used a lot of products, I will sometimes, again, just go over my hair and do this all the way down to sort of clean it. I never do any of this to clean my hair. And even on the top of my head, I go in like this and just very carefully massage and I take my hand out and in again. So I go in sections. I don't do any of this. It causes so much frizz on my hair that it's just crazy. And it also tangles very easily that way. I use the scalp brush in the same way where I put it on my scalp and I do tiny circles and then I lift it off, move it, and then the other way so I don't go like this. Never, never, never. For conditioner, I also use the Rawa Classic series and this is definitely the best conditioner I've ever used. It is so nice. It rinses out beautifully and the hair still feels really nice and conditioned. I leave it in for about five, ten minutes if I can and I only use it on like the ponytail area and down which now is most of my hair but I avoid having any sort of up on my scalp. I definitely don't feel like I need it so I really just try to not weigh my hair down. On the scalp it's already doing that on its own after the shower i always sort of squeeze out my hair to get rid of as much water as possible and then i wrap it in a soft towel or microfiber towel i also have a fairly unflattering hot pink microfiber turban that i wrap my hair in and i just let that 
sort of soak up all the water and I never do any of like that rubbing with a towel. I would say I leave it for like 15 to 20 minutes. I try not to leave it like this for too long. My scalp really doesn't like being wet and trapping all that moisture on the top of my head. I layer the styling products into my wet hair. I don't tend to have a lot of them and I also layer the heat protectant last and then I just detangle with my fingers. If I have a lot of product I find that I need to go through with a brush but I always do that after I've applied all the product so it's kind of working double duty to both brush out all the tangles and everything and also disperse the product throughout my hair so I don't have to brush any more than absolutely necessary. I use a tangle teaser because it has these flexible bristles which really again help minimize the amount of breakage when your hair is wet. I've had this the same one for a really long time and I've not bothered to buy a new one because it works. I do have foams and hairsprays and all kinds of things but I don't use them regularly so I'm not going to include them here. I'm just going to sort of show you what I use almost every single time I wash my hair. And the one product I really wish I found sooner, it is the Kerastas Nutritive Nectar Thermique. It's a leave-in thing. And this just makes my hair so much more manageable. It's great if you struggle with tangling hair and it's also a heat protectant. I would not try to grow my hair this long again without this kind of product. I've used it for just under half a year at this point and I tend to put it into my hair, whether I'm air drying it or not, almost every single time I wash my hair I use this. I would say if your hair is already long and you're struggling with tangling, you need this. The thing you might not need but really want is this Color Wow uh, Pop and Lock High Gloss Finish. This is like a serum and it looks really scary because it's quite sparkly but this makes my hair so incredibly shiny. I don't tend to use this every time I wash my hair. It's really nice for shine. I don't think it does anything for the health of your hair but it's it's a fun product that I use to feel a little bit better about the fact that I'm not really curling my hair, which I really want to. Sometimes I will air dry my hair, but it takes a really long time when it's this long. So I tend to use my blow dryer and then I have a cool short button on it. So I take down the temperature as much as I can. I use my blow dryer pointing the nozzle down to sort of reduce the frizz. Sometimes I finish off with this hot dry brush thing and this is so great for blow drying in product into my hair especially if I'm using any other extra products like a foam or anything I find that my hair can get really sticky when I use that and using this it just blow dries all the products into my hair and it just feels really soft and nice. Only use this on the last bit of moisture on your hair. I never dry my hair from fully wet only using this dry brush I only do it on the last five or 10% to really get that like smooth shine. It gets way too hot. I feel like it's way too damaging to try to dry my hair from completely wet with this. Just, I feel like that's a very important thing to say about this one. For me, it does really straighten my hair. It doesn't tend to do a lot for volume because my hair is just so long and heavy at this point that it just falls down anyways but it just leaves that beautiful silky finish. I've spoken about this so many times, but the Way Matte Pomade is a product I use nearly every single day. It doesn't create a lot of ugly buildup on my hair and it just tames all like the baby hairs and it's matte so I can apply it in like the middle here in my parting and it doesn't get greasy or ugly. And it's perfect if I have like want a sleeker ponytails. It's perfect for those hairs here. Even when I don't want to like completely flatten my hair, it's just perfect for cleaning things up and it just makes me look like 110% more put together every single time. The other few things would be texture sprays, which I again very much love. My favorite is the Way texture spray. Really hyped. I don't think I need to sell this anymore. I also like the Amica Undone Volume and Matte Texture Spray. Both of these, this is definitely my favorite. I also have the Amica Touchable Hairspray, any kind of flexible hold hairspray. I just focus on things that are not going to be like crunchy. I feel like it's causing more damage to my hair, so I just try to avoid all of that. Because my hair has gotten so long, it's just, it takes way too much time to curl it and do all of these things. Even though I do miss doing that. I've really gotten used to a very sort of lacy approach to styling my hair. I tend to do a lot of sort of looser braids, either one or 
like two down the back here i just need to make sure that my hair doesn't sort of fly everywhere and get tangled i love using the texture spray to kind of create even when my hair is just down having a little bit more movement to it or creating a more interesting ponytail or a little bit more volume to it especially having a bit more texture to a braid it's nice to have a little bit of texture spray to make it a little bit more interesting so when i'm at home i use a lot of scrunchies or these like invisibobbles they were really popular for a while i still use them because they're gentler on my hair and i've also been obsessed with this hair bow thing it's a really cute way of sort of just getting the hair out of my face which you will notice once your hair gets quite long it's just a little bit of a faff trying to live your daily life with it because it gets in the way so having anything like a half updo or anything that sort of pulls it away from your face and to the back of your body makes everything a little bit easier. I love doing these bun ponytails. I feel like they disperse the weight a lot more so I don't get a headache from wearing a bun or anything like that. I've had my hair get tangled and then get caught on a doorknob more than once. It is really painful and I can imagine not the best way to treat my hair. Hopefully you can see this routine as a little bit of a sort of carefully lazy approach. You want to get out of the way to let your hair give it a chance of growing where you don't use any excessive heat styling on it and you don't bleach it and you just treat it very gently. But at the same time, you want to be very careful with using protective hair styles when you're sleeping and brushing it the right way and just being gentle with it. Of course you can give your hair the best possible chance of growing and it still might not, you might not get hair that touches the ground but at least you've gotten a very healthy hair and you've given it a chance to grow which I find that a lot of people have said that once they did all the things that they kind of deep down knew would help their hair started to grow but it's it's doing it. I really enjoy this whole process of seeing how long I could get my hair. I'm not sure if I'm at the end yet. I feel like it's slowed down a bit the past few months. I really appreciate sort of everything I learned and trying to accept and work with the natural state of my hair instead of against it. I hope this was helpful and let me know what your best tip is for healthier hair and I will see you in the next video. Bye!